Hi, everyone. This is Cassidy Sharples, and it's Q&A day here at the Red X. I hope everyone is having a good one. Uh, welcome to Q&A with Top Prospectors. This is where we answer your prospecting questions with the best of the best, people who have proven prospecting processes and approaches to predictably generate listing appointments. We get these questions from you, the listeners, so when you see an email from us, the Red X, that's your opportunity to ask any question about something that's standing in your way to getting the results you want. After that, we go to Top Prospectors for answers and help you on your way to success. So today's session is going to cover farming, geographic prospecting, uh, just lists and just sold campaigns, uh, so that you can be the agent that maximizes the opportunity with these types of leads. And from your questions, we discovered three categories that make that path to success a little clearer. Um, so we're going to go over three these three categories. It's uh, planning, scheduling, cold setting, and then mind, motivation, confidence, overcoming fears and rejection. And lastly, approaches, methods, and techniques, and, you know, how to apply them. So I am about to introduce you to John Sullivan. When we reached out into the community of Top Red X Prospectors, John's name came up. Um, John is incredible. He employs um, Mike Ferry's coaching, uh, uh, so analyzing numbers. Every time he makes a contact, uh, it equals to about $133. About 60 to 65% of his business comes from prospecting. So we're really excited to talk to him today and get some insight from him. So now let me introduce you to John Sullivan. Hi, John. Hey, Cassidy. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us. We're really excited to get started. Uh, so, John, can you give us a quick story on how you got into real estate and where you are now? Yeah, no, of course. Um, I actually got into real estate. I just um, got to my second year anniversary um, last week on the 1st of September. I was a professional soccer player in England for 10 years. So when I left school at 16, I went straight into professional soccer. Um, mm -hmm. Then at the age of 26, I kind of stopped enjoying that, didn't love the process, um, didn't mm -hmm. love the career anymore. So I, I ended up moving to America, and then my girlfriend, who's now my wife, uh, just said to me, Hey, you should try real estate, and then I just just went and went to class. You know, took all the classes. Uh, took me a few times mm -hmm. to pass the test, but once I got past the test, uh, haven't really looked back since. Wow, wow, that's like. What, wait, what did you? Why did you say you came into the states for? Uh, actually, I just I met my uh, you know my Nicole. I was just here on vacation. Uh, I met her. We were friends. Just kept in touch. Oh, cool. And then when I made yeah. the decision to leave. Uh, to leave, uh, you know, England, uh, it just felt right that to move here to America with her, and that's I've been here nearly four years now, so it's been a it's been a whirlwind few years. Wow! All right, well, awesome. Uh, and that's it's great that you found that kind of success. We're actually we're doing this because a lot of agents in the Red X community would like better results from their prospecting, and they like to reach level of success that you have. Um, so, can you help us understand why specifically prospecting leads like this is valuable to you? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing everyone has to know is it doesn't matter what level you're at. We're always critiquing ourselves to do better. If you're doing 10 mils a year, you want to do 15. If you're doing 15, you want to do 25. If you're doing 50, you want to do 80. So I think that's the great thing about the job is that we can always keep growing. Um, but the, what I found is the more deals I'm doing, I'm facing more rejection because that's just normal. And when I first started, I used to look at the top agents and think, they don't get any rejection, they get appointments every time, which isn't true. They just yeah. know not to stop, and when they get rejection, they just keep going because they know they're very close. So, you know, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a very exciting career. There's good days, there's bad days. We never know when the good days are going to come or when the bad days are going to come, and I've had some of my best, you know, prospecting uh -huh. days on the day that I didn't really feel like doing it, and then some days I wake up and I'm like, I can't wait to prospect today, and then I... I get absolutely nothing. So it's 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 very unpredictable but exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. So it's kinda of like a challenge. Um why is geographic prospecting valuable to you in particular? I think where the market is at right now with um especially here in Las Vegas we have a lot of top, top agents. And we we're very lucky. We do have good expired and withdrawn, have a good amount of number every day, more than some, you know, cities. But there's a big mm -hmm. Mike Ferry-based agency here, so these people are getting called by a lot of people, so you really have to be on top of your game. Um, right. So what I found is as the year's gone on and, you know, more and more people are calling the expires, I'm still reaching them, but probably not getting the return I really want on them right now. 
whether that's a mixture mm-hmm. of other agents calling or whether my skill set has dropped a little bit, you know, I, I'm always working on that. But I think the mm-hmm. geo leads that Red X has introduced has really helped my business and no one's really calling them. And our job in real estate is to speak to people about real estate every day. That's our job. You know, who we're looking for people to buy or sell real estate. And I think that's why the geo leads are so good because it's so efficient, very quick. Um, mm-hmm. And you can just get through a whole community if you just listed just sort of home, you know, in, in, in two to three hours. It's fantastic. Right. Oh, cool, cool. And I think I, I probably a lot to do with that is, like you said, you have to get over that rejection. But I think a lot of it is also just structuring what you do, you know, which works with our category planning, scheduling, and goal setting. Uh, the questions that we received for this were, uh, what's the best way to set goals? What's your step-by-step process or routine for the day? Uh, how do you choose an area and schedule calls? How many calls or how long do you prospect every day? So let's just go mm-hmm. ahead and dive into the first question. Uh, what is the best way you feel to set goals? The best way to set goals, it, it, it depends. I mean, my goals are both transaction-wise and financial. You know, my my first year, I, last year, I didn't really know what to expect. I just came into the business. So I was like, I don't know what to do. And I said, I'm going to want to do 50 deals, which is now I look back was a really high number. But, but I did 44. You know, in my first year, so I was like, you know, that's a good first year. So then this year, as I felt I had more, um, you know, more skill set and I was better at time management, I sat down with my Mike Ferry coach and we decided to give it that 60 was the goal to go for and I'm right on track to hit 60 in my second year. I think it just depends, you know, on what your time time management is like. I think it all starts with time management, having a schedule that, it's unrealistic that you're going to stick to 100%, but if you can stick to it 50, 60, 70%, then I think that's mm-hmm. going to hold you in good stead. And if you want to do more deals, you have to talk to more people and be much more efficient on the phone. So for me, the telephone is the greatest tool we have as a real estate agent, even with all the social media and technology going on. People yeah. can still be reached by the phone, you know, and, and it's it, – you can speak to 30, 40, 50 people a day and you're in your office. I, think, I just think it's incredible. Yeah, no, totally. And and uh, what kind of goals do you like to set? Is it numerical? Uh, do, what, what, what do you, what what goals do you set? How do you set them and how do you try to meet them? Do you mean on a daily basis or on a yearly basis? Let's say both. So on a daily basis, my, my minimum is to hit 30 brand new contacts a day. So that doesn't include lead follow-up. It doesn't include past clients into influence, which I count as contacts mm-hmm. when I call them. Um, so my big thing is 30 brand new contacts a day. And, and that's been my biggest struggle this year. I'm actually only averaging 19 contacts per day brand new. And I know that I'm leaving a lot of money on the table by just them 11 contacts that I'm leaving. Um, so mm-hmm. my biggest goal now toward the end of the year is can I get that average of 19 up to 30? which is just more self-discipline, being, you know, more proactive and, and being stricter with my time management schedule, which is really the biggest thing. I, I've learned that the best agents are fanatic about their schedule, and that's how I want to be. Oh, well, great. Well, and that's, you know, and I think everybody's got a different process, but it sounds like you've got it figured out for yourself. What, what's your step-by-step process or routine every day? So my, mine's a little bit kind of different to most people so my alarm goes off at 4 a.m i go to bed very early in the week so 4 a.m for me is i'm happy waking up at that time and then i like to you know go in the gym in the morning Uh, i used to play sports so that really gets me motivated for the day when i go to the gym i feel i have more energy um i leave the house at about 6 45 and i like to get to the office about 7 15 in the morning some days 7 some days 7 30 but around about that time and then the really the first 30 minutes of the day just organizing my numbers, responding to any emails that came in overnight. Um, and then really I'm on the phone at 8 till, till you know, 11 a.m. That's really a strict wow. schedule. So and that's my time to really do it. I just feel like as a real estate agent, if we can if we can really lock down from the moment we wake up to noon and be very productive, then the rest mm-hmm. of our days are going to take care of themselves with appointments, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, well, what is it about getting up early that you feel like gives you an advantage other than, you know, the extra pump up energy from working out? It's it's just a mindset thing. I feel like I'm I feel like when I get to the office at seven, I'm the first mm-hmm. person in, in Las Vegas who's in their office. Now, I know I'm not. There's other people out there 
probably more disciplined than me who are probably at the office earlier or etc. But that's how I make that's how I feel in my head. So it's like I feel like I'm ahead of the game. And and yeah. for me I just feel like I don't like to be flustered. So I like to have you know time to do things, etc. So for me I just like being the first one at the office. It makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel like yeah. I'm ahead of the game and, and I f- makes me it gives me time to get ready for, for prospecting because prospecting, you know, that's not it's it's tiring. It's sometimes yeah. stressful. It's ups and downs. Sometimes you can set free appointments and other days you set nothing and no one wants to talk to you. It's very up and down. So, you know, I think having that schedule really does help with prospecting. And when you've had previous successes, it gives you hope that you're going to have a success again very soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, when you're when you're making those calls, all, all those calls from 8 to 11, those are prospecting calls? Yeah, so if I don't have appointments, I'll go longer till noon. But my ideal schedule would be from 8 to 11, you know, prospecting calls and then probably 11 to 11.30 lead follow-up. And then hoping that, mm-hmm. you know, in the afternoon I have my appointments set. I try and set my appointments out after uh, after 2 p.m. Um, at mm-hmm. least. I try not to meet any clients before 2 p.m. if possible, unless it's a rare, a rare situation. But... I like to hit the expires withdrawn first. Then I like to do the for sale by owners. Then the just listed, just sold. Uh, then pass client sense mm-hmm. of influence, and then go on my lead follow up after that. So that's generally the order that I call in. Sometimes I may mix mm-hmm. it up. So if I'm having maybe some bad expired calls, I may just pick up the phone and call a past client because they're generally nicer and they know you. They don't yeah. deal with you. They like you. They're generally nicer conversations and they get you back in the groove. Right. Well, how do you choose the area for these calls? And do you door knock as well? I have started recently um, hand-picking expired and, for, uh, expired and withdrawn properties and for sale by owners to door knock. And when I say hand-pick, you know, I think it's a motivated seller. I know the property's occupied. Um, I feel they're priced, you know, in, in re, you know, pretty close to reality. And they're normally, you know, geographically on the way home or if I've got an appointment, I can go there. I don't go and door knock 30, 40, 50 doors. I've done that a couple of times in my own community. But for me, I just feel picking up the phone is much more time consuming and time is the biggest asset we have. In terms of who I speak to um, on the geo leads and calling rounds, I, I call around my justice and I just sold. So if I've listed a property, I call. When I sell it, I call. And that's really what I do. I call around my listings because I have a great knowledge of them homes. And I look also, when did these people buy? You know, if, if I just sold a home for 200 and someone bought it in, in 11 for, you know, 95 or 100, which is realistic in our market, you know, they may be ready mm-hmm. to, to sell and they just don't know what the prices are yet. Right. Well, and so I think something else that ties into the whole scheduling thing is you said that, um, you your your goal is thirty new contacts a day, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, how many phone calls would you say you make a day? I know that you you work from Ooh. eight to eleven, twelve-ish. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. I need to work on that number because I do use a, a dialer. I have the triple dialer, so I do use All that. Right. I don't keep track on how many people I'm dialing, and then also in terms of a contact, I also. For me, a contact is someone who is a decision maker. Um, oh. I know that, you know, I know they're the homeowner and, I've, and they've let me ask my first question on the script. You know, if I pick up the phone and they say, no, not interested, and I don't need So I'm also very picky of what I count as a contact. So I may speak to, say, 42 people, but only 30 may be contacts because they allowed me to ask the first question on my mm-hmm. script. So that's kind of what I clarify as a contact. Okay, so you you focus more on like the hours and then the goal of, on the contact goal. Yeah, no, I do um, obviously because in our schedule. But if I'm not hitting thirty contacts in three hours, it means I'm talking too much because I should be hitting, you know, between nine and twelve contacts an hour. If I'm if I'm not hitting that, it means that the conversations I'm having, I'm I'm talking way too much, you know, because yeah, so only quality, not quantity. Out. Exactly, yeah. So 30 is my, listen, 30 is my, my goal, but if I speak to, say, 22 people and I set two appointments or one one qualified appointment, then that's still a very successful day, but 30 is just a good base of, of where I need to be. And, and probably next year, if I want to increase my goal to what I want to do, 
I'm probably going to have to take that 30 up to maybe 40 or even 50. I know agents do like 50 contacts a day. Oh, wow. Well, that's really impressive. Well, and you also mentioned that, like, you, you encounter calls where people are just, like, not interested, and then you encounter calls where people let you ask the first question. But I think that this plays really well into our second category, which has to do with really the mental game, uh, mindset, mental barriers, motivation, confidence, and handling rejection. A lot of the questions that we get asked every time we send out an email have to do with these things. So let's start with, you know, something pretty basic, just – um like advice for overcoming distractions and procrastinations like how do you how do you discipline yourself so i have a i have my own office and i have a desk with my with two screens on with you know mm-hmm. stuff i have to do for that day so a folder and that's my if i'm doing paperwork or have an email that's there then i have a separate desk which is simply just a tall stand-up desk with my scripts mm-hmm. in front of it, no distraction. So I have two computers. I have one for prospect and I have one for all the other stuff. So I think the biggest thing to do is to just know that most things can get handled after 11 a.m. So, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's, uh, you know, that's the reality. We we get distracted because we want to get distracted. And I do it all the time, you know. Oh, I'm going to check my email quick. And then you read an email and it's an agent who oh, we're pulling an offer off your listing, and then that ruins your mindset for your calls, and then you don't have good calls. So I think the biggest thing to do is have a separate space where you prospect. Make sure you're standing up with good energy. Um, I always mm-hmm. recommend prospecting for 50 minutes and then taking a 10-minute break on the hour just so you can reset your mind. Um, mm-hmm. And then really just having no email open. Try not to have your phone, you know, because of Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff. We all do it. You know, you go on there and you see something negative or you're, you know. So really, I think it's just simplifying everything and just making time to, hey, this is my prospect in time. You know, I would never miss an appointment. You know, I say to myself, I would never miss a listing appointment, but I shouldn't miss my prospecting because without the prospecting, you don't get the listing appointment. So it's the most important thing. Right. Well, yeah, and you mentioned negativity, like avoiding negativity. What about handling rejection? Like, how have you how have you learned how to, to just move on from that, to push on from that? Because a lot of people are just afraid to pick up the phone. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's tough. I have I have been days all the time, and uh, if people swear and they mean down the phone and stuff, which does happen, I don't really care about that. That that happens once, you know, every few days, someone would just. But you got to think, these people, you know, we're, we're calling them. You know, not so much cold calling, but we really are. You know, so. You gotta think what's going on in these people's mind. Plus they have stuff going on in their lives too. You know, you sometimes catch people at the right. wrong time or sometimes I call someone saying, Hey, I'm looking for Lawrence and I'm like and it's the wife and maybe Lawrence has passed away. You know, these are sensitive subjects we're dealing with. So I think yeah. just not to take it personal and when you've had success, I think that's what when you know you had success in the past, you know you can repeat it again. So just say, hey, that one's gone. Just move on to the next. But it's easier said than done. Like I think that's the reality. Right. And well, was there like a turning point when you learned how to apply that? Not just that empathy, but just you know to apply that armor to yourself. Like it doesn't. It's not personal. What, yeah, I what think did you learn in that? Just, yeah, I think that's when I joined the Mike Ferry coaching system, and I I, I came across Mike uh, personally, and also my coach, who's fantastic. You know, I think the thing just to remember is, you know, rejection is just part of life, you know. We get rejected yeah. every day. I sometimes send out, I've just sold a home and I send out 100 mail cards to the community and no one calls me off them. So it might, that's still rejection. No one's called me, but it's passive rejection. It's, you know, right. what we're doing is we're putting ourselves out there and like anything, the, you know, the more you put yourself out there, you know, the benefits are there, are, are higher. So I think just to, just to know that, that it's just normal. It's not personable. They don't know you. They're just down the end of a telephone. And not let anyone else dictate your outcome and your goals. You know, I try not to let anyone else yeah. have an effect on my goals. So if it means I have to speak to more people to get hit my goals, and that's what I'll do. Well, okay. So you, you, you set up your goals. You work hard to hit them. You try to a point quality over quantity and then you just you push back you push past rejection with empathy and you push back rejection by just telling yourself it's not personal and it's just the natural part of the process. Uh so a lot of people might have trouble just just even applying these techniques. So our third category is uh approaches, techniques, um methods and just how to use these correctly. So I think one thing that might help because you mentioned 
that, you know, you want people who will at least let you say the first line. <laughs> so, and, and that sometimes that just does not happen. <laughs> Uh, so how can someone start a call without sounding like every other agent that this person is potentially talking to or has been called by? Um, I think I'll just stand up, be energetic, be enthusiastic um, is, is a big thing. I Sometimes when I take, you know, when I take listings from expires, I sometimes ask them, hey, you've probably got a ton of phone calls. Did anyone else take an interest? And I may say, actually, yeah, we inter- interviewed a couple of people. Or they may say, no, honestly, mm-hmm. everyone was – was down the phone, was just telling us, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that, and you were the first one who asked us questions. So I think it's just important to have a mindset that how can I help these people? That's really that's really right. what it comes down to, you know? How can I help these people? Because if they know we're desperate, they can feel it. Even over the phone, right. they can feel that we're desperate. So I think I'm just standing up. I bet. Exactly. Nervousness, you know, maybe not know your script, you know, maybe they throw you an objection and you, you kind of fluster, which, which, listen, happens to all of us every single day. I, I do, I mean, I've had two times today where I was on the phone, I got an objection and I didn't handle it as, as good as I should have done. So it's trying to put that to the next prospect that we have. And it's just a numbers game. It really is, you know, and that's why I've started to become more analytical to see my numbers because it's nice to know how many people do I have to speak to on average to get a listing appointment? Or, you know, every time these people put the phone down, how much money am I making? So these things have really helped my mindset in terms of I have a stronger mindset now than I probably ever have in my life, just because I understand that rejection is just is just normal, it's just part of life. Yeah, no, totally. And I and I'm sure and I'm sure that being analytical about it. It really is helpful with, you know, building up that armor we talked about and just helping you meet those goals because it's not personal. It's mm-hmm. all about meeting those numbers. Uh, so can you tell us more about that story that happened today? About when I was on the phone prospecting? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I was just calling just because you sold. I remember it, and I was having a, a just a clear conversation, and I, I, mm-hmm. I asked her, I can't remember exactly what the name of the woman was, and she goes, that's not my house, but I know you. You. And I was like, and I was thrown wow. up. I was like, how do you? And anyway, it ended up that this woman used to live at this address, but I went on a listing appointment with her and her mom about six months ago, and she remembered my voice. Wow. So for a second, I for a second, I, and I didn't get the listing as well. They actually decided to list with their friend, which made it double worse. But I I called in a random home I just sold in the area, and I came through to a lady who knew me, and I didn't know her. So I was for a little bit, I was kind of like, well, you know, flustered, but. I had to kind of that quick. So it wasn't like a really, you know, like, tr- you know, dramatic moment. But for me, too, it was like I haven't really had that happen. You know, the odds of me calling right. someone prospecting and getting through to a lady who knows me, I don't know her. I went on a, you know, on a, a listening appointment with her and her mom six months ago, and she used to live in a house. It's it, totally random. So, I, you know, I ended up having a good conversation, and they sold the house that I lost out on. But maybe there'll be a chance Mm -hmm. for me to get that listing in the future for the next time they sell because I don't think the experience they had was too good. So it's I think it's just being sharp on your feet. You have to be sharp. And sometimes when you have distractions up, when you're prospecting, maybe, you know, you're on Instagram or you're texting someone or you're looking at your email, you know, they know that you're not ready. They know you have to be ready to answer any questions that they have. But also, if you don't quite know the answer, just take a moment to pause and, you know, really think about what you're going to respond and, one of the biggest challenges I've had is not cutting people off. And even this call, I've cut you off probably two or three times, and it's still a challenge to me. And uh, <laughs> that's why, um, you know, I also record all of my, uh, you know, coaching calls and my Mike Ferry coach. And I noticed, too, that I do cut in because I'm very opinionated. So I think it's just always just trying to get better no matter what we do and try and improve our skills. And it's helped me in my personal life as well. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me some other things that you've learned from recording? Like hearing your own conversations? Yeah, well, I learned this when I played sport, and I, I used to watch training back in games back, and, and it's great when you play well, or great when you have good calls and set appointments, but the ones where you don't play well, or you don't set appointments, it's kind of cringe. It's, you know, I, I listen to myself now on the phone, and sometimes I'm like, is that what I sound like? And uh, <laughs> it's, 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 we have to remember that's all people are hearing now. They're down the other end of the phone. Yeah. So a big thing for me is I'm a very serious person in work. I don't know why. When I leave work, I'm not. But in work, I'm very serious. 
I'm very driven yeah. and serious. So when I prospect or when I'm on the phone, I always have to remember to try and smile, you know, smile when you're on the phone because they can feel that tone. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a, a, a you know, compl- complicated answer to a pretty simple question that you asked, but for me it's just always trying to improve yourself and by going back and listening to, you know, your calls. A bit like when you set a voicemail on your phone, you know, you listen to it back two or three times to make sure you're happy that people are going to call it. And I think prospecting is the same. We want to go back and listen to what we're actually saying to people and if we're getting objections that every person is using and getting us off the phone, we want to make sure we can try and learn how to deal with them better. Yeah. No, I think that's a great idea. Do you think that is a part of your process that makes you unique from other agents? Well, I don't think I'm unique, honestly. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think I'm unique at all, and that's just the reality. I think I have a job to do, and I'm a real estate agent, so my job is to sell homes. Everyone's goals are different, but for me, I felt 60 at the start of this year was very realistic because really that's only selling more than one home a week, just over, and I work five to six days a week. I mean, I should be doing that. If anything, I feel like I'm slightly underperforming. So I wouldn't say I was unique. I think what it is is when you start out and you're maybe not having the success you want, you then start talking to other people who don't prospect, and then they talk a little bit negativity about it. Oh, my God, you cold call. You know, that's rubbish. You know, you should start doing Facebook ads or mailers. And and you just you just get distracted in so many different directions. So I think when I started real estate, I joined a brokerage, and my broker's name is Craig Tan, who's a great agent here in Vegas, and he was a big Mike Ferry agent for six or seven years. And I just liked the way he did business. So instead of looking at what everyone else does, I just looked at him and said, I want to be successful like him and just followed what he did. So I didn't, I kind of had tunnel vision to just follow him. And now as I'm getting more experience, I'm starting to add a little bit to things that I think will improve me as an agent. Yeah, well, and it's working. I mean, let me, let me talk you up. Credit where credit is due. Most agents sell less than 12 homes a year. You sell four times Mm -hmm. more than the average agent. So that's pretty impressive if you ask me. It's actually five times, but no, I'm joking. How many times? Oh, five times. Sorry, I'm analytical. No, 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 I'm only joking. No, that's the, and that's the, and that's the crazy thing is, twelve homes in this business can still get you a great living if your price point's three, four, five hundred thousand. I just feel mm-hmm. like, you know, when you're only doing twelve deals a year, I, I just feel like you're leaving so much money on the table and. You know, it's but if you're doing twelve deals a year and you're happy doing that, then fine, you know, then keep doing it. But if you're doing twelve deals a year and you want to do twenty five and you're not happy with your progress, I think it's important to take a step back and look at your schedule and kind of think, you know what, where where am I missing out? Because if I'm working every day, I want to do twenty five deals and I'm doing twelve, then there's something I'm not quite doing right. Right. Well and just being critical of yourself seems necessary. Yeah, but don't over critique, you know, just I I'm a big believer in like we all have good and bad things, you know, we all do things well right. and not so well well. And a lot of people say always work on your weaknesses, which is, is a valid point, but I more believe the fact that if you do three things really well, then double down on them things. Do them things better than anyone. So I think one of the things I'm good at doing is I think I'm very aggressive on my lead follow up. Most of my appointments yeah. and contracts signed are from lead follow up, not from the initial call. So I'm very aggressive on that because I think I'm good, whereas most people would maybe work, well, I need to call more people. They have really good leads in their lead follow-up, but they're focusing on the new contacts and maybe neglecting them. So I think it's always important to try and improve our weaknesses, but really double or triple down on the really thing, on the things we're really good at, which separate yeah, us. Yeah, that's a- yeah, that seems like a really productive uh, philosophy. Um, can you explain how you follow up on the leads? Yeah, base just on um, it just depends on the um, you know type of call I have, their time frame. Um, I just have everything set out. So if I speak to someone and they're not quite ready to set an appointment yet, uh, I'll probably give them a call. You know, maybe the next day or you know two days later to try and get them. You know, see if they're ready to set an appointment yet. And then if they're say six or nine or twelve months out, I don't disregard them. I, I will put them in for follow up calls every five to sixty days and. Just to see if they're still on course to sell in that year's time. But I also mm-hmm. do trash leads. I think one of the best things you can do as an agent is to trash leads because I think we all carry leads or names and numbers in our in our dialers. 
that we think we can convert, but really we can't. And they're like a safety net to us because we think, oh, I have these people sitting here, they might sell. I, as I've got gotten more busy in my business, I think I've realized that sometimes trashing a lead, if you try calling them three, four, five, six times, you've had conversations, they say, no, I've got a friend in the business, I've got a friend in the business, got a friend in the business, got a friend in the business. Mm -hmm. If you hear that five or six times, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's time just to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to trash this lead and focus on someone else because I have lost deals yeah. in the past where I, my, my really good lead follow-ups have got muddled up in really poor lead follow-ups. So I think it's trying right. to identify by what is a lead to me, you know, that's really important. Yeah. Well, and it, and it saves time. It, it means you're just mm -hmm. focusing on the ones that are important to you. Exactly. And, and, and time efficiency again, you know, you want to be, we really want to be prospecting people who are ready to sign contracts in the next, you know, seven to 14 days. That's really what we're trying to look for. So other than getting rid of these leads, uh, how do you keep track? Keep track of? My lead follow-up. Keep track of the, your lead. Yeah, yeah, your follow-up leads. Yeah, I just take really extensive notes every call I make. Um, and then what I do is I just, when I come to the office every day, it pops up in my email, the people I have to follow up with. And then before I call mm -hmm. them, I, I never call them on a dialer. My lead follow-ups are always hand-dialed because I like to read okay. my notes first to make sure that I can say something which may, may, which may make them remember me you know, if they said, oh, you know, we might be moving to Savannah, Georgia, for instance. You know, if I, if I have that in my notes, I can bring that up. You know, hey, are you moving closer to Savannah, Georgia? You know, maybe no one else has that. And then right. also I have my accent, so a mixture of that. I think people remember my accent as well because, obviously, there's not too many English people here. So I think that helps me <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, you've got a leg up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so where do, you, where do you write down these notes? Just like a big notepad you put on your computer? No, I do everything on computer. So I actually, the dialer I use at the minute is Mojo. I know that Redix has come out with a, a really good new dialer. Um, the last two years since I started real estate, as everything's been in Mojo, and the great thing, especially about the Geo leads is, and, you know, the expired, they sync with Mojo instantly, which is fantastic. So all of my lead follow-up is in Mojo. I don't do anything by paper. Everything is on my computer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and that, that's good. Paper gets torn, paper gets lost. <laughs> Data exactly. usually does yeah. not get quite yeah. as, is not quite yeah. as disposable. <laughs> um, exactly. So, the only thing I have every day on paper is I have a daily log sheet where I circle how many contacts I've made and, uh, you know, who right. I called. So, like, if I see today, mm -hmm. I've made, you know, 16 just listed just sold calls. I've made three follow-up calls. I've made one old expired. I've made five buyer calls. I've made, uh, I think, eight expired. So I, it's good for me to know who I'm calling. And then this afternoon after this call, I then need to go back and make my for sale by owner calls who come in today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and let's see. Uh, lots, and, and you know what? I think a, an important part of it is also, like, scripts. Like, what, what, what do you mm -hmm. say to these people? Do you have specific scripts for every kind of lead, like if it's a follow-up or if you're just calling someone for the first time? What, what scripts do you use for these types of leads? For lead follow-up, I don't really use a script. I usually use the notes I use and just get try and get into the call quickly. You know, hey, you know, you know, hey, Cassidy, just trying to catch up with you again. John Sullivan from Huntington and Ellis. We spoke back in July. Then I just go into the conversation. Um, in terms of the sale by owner, the pre-qualifying, the just sold, the just listed and the expired, I do use the Mike Ferry scripts, which, um, you know, I think everyone has access to. Um, I know mm -hmm. Relics, are, you know, and Mike have a connection together. So, I do use them, and, and like every agent, I do sometimes drift off topic. You know, I, I'm sometimes a little bit expressive, so I do drift off topic, but the scripts are really good to get you back on topic and really ask the questions yeah. that you have to ask, you know. When are you moving? Yeah. You know, why are you moving? You know, where are you going to go to next? You know, these questions are really important. Can you give us a little bit of, like, a role play of what that sounds like? Like, treat me like I'm a... A first time, the first, I'm the first time you're calling me, and I'm the first time I'm picking up. Okay. Hi, I'm looking for Cassidy, please. Hi, this is me. Hey, this is John Sullivan with Huntington and Ellis Real Estate, and I'm sure you figured out that your home came up on my system as an expired listing, and I was calling to see when do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I might know a guy who will take care of it for me. Friend of my brother's. Okay, so okay, so a friend of your brother's is a real estate agent. 
Um, I'm really not sure. I, I actually just talked to my family about it, and he just said that he might know a guy. So I thought I might follow up on that. Okay, fantastic. And uh, when you sell your home, where will you go to next? What was that? Uh, when you sell your home, where are you moving to next? Um, Just to a better neighborhood, uh, closer to the school where, where I want my kids to go. Fantastic. So better school for your kids. That sounds great. And uh, how soon do you have to be in that new home to get your kids into the school that you want them to be in? Hopefully by the new school year, so at most a year, but at at the very least, sorry, a year. And then, like, if I had to move them in the middle of the year, that wouldn't be so bad. I just don't want to throw them in, you know, in the middle of the semester. Of course, and I completely understand that. And uh, obviously you're on the market before for four months, so in this aggressive market, what do you think stopped your home from selling? I'm not really sure. This is my first time selling a home. Uh, I'm I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go with, from here. I'm just kind of following okay. the instructions of what I read online. Oh, of course, what you read online, and uh, I completely understand that. So the agent that you were last working with, how did you happen to work with that agent? How did you pick him? Uh, actually, my husband picked him. Uh, he my husband's pretty busy. He he works full time, so um, he just kind of uh, quickly. <laughs> Selected somebody who had good reviews, um, and then we just kind of went with it. But the but then obviously the home did not uh, get sold. So we're back to square one. So this time, so you're making the decision this time. I take it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so what did your agent do that you liked best? What was that? And what did your agent do that you liked best? Uh, did it for me. <laughs> I have kids, so I'm busy. <laughs> A lot, uh, okay. and so I, I want to get the, the home sold, but obviously i, I got to focus on other things, and then my husband has to work. Okay, and what do you think your last agent should have done? Uh, probably just kept me in the loop. I didn't even know that the listing had expired until it was basically too late. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Honestly, one of the biggest complaints I hear every day from my clients is the lack of communication they had from their previous agent, so I can completely understand where you're coming from. Um, but what will you expect from the next agent you choose? Um, I just hope, like I said, they keep me in the loop. They 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 sell my home within a good price range. They they give me a, a good. I, I I actually been looking for like more documentation. I just want to see mm-hmm. what their plan is. Uh, because if we don't have, if we both don't have a plan, there's a problem. <laughs> so of I really want, want more with an- proof of a plan. <laughs> Okay, so you want an agent who's got an aggressive plan of action to get your home sold and not just put it in yeah. the MLS and hope that it sells. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so have you already chosen an agent to work with the next time? Um, I'm going to end right there because <laughs> uh-huh. I would have chosen you. <laughs> I, I've never <laughs> sold a house before, so, you know, but at that point, you, you have me sold. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe I should get a house just, just to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a standard Mike Ferry expired script over the phone. Um, and yeah. I literally just reeled through that. It's on my wall. So so you just have to kind of make it your own. You know, I I think it's always good to have that. And I know a lot of people are concerned about scripts. And, and you were pretty easy on me too there. You know, sellers sometimes are a lot harder. Uh, but sometimes it mm-hmm. does go that easy. Sometimes it, it just works works out for you. You know, you catch the people at the right time in the right mind, you know, uh, frame of mind, and, you know, that's kind of it. Yeah. I mean, what, what did you think about that? Did you find it was scripted, or do you think it was very free-flowing? I think it was pretty free-flowing. Uh, you you applied questions to my particular circumstance, which I think is important. Um, mm-hmm. Having worked, like, as a very young person in a call center before, I know how people respond to scripts, <laughs> and it's not well, so you've mm-hmm. got to learn how to say it, you know, in a way that personalizes you know, to their circumstances. Of course. And one of the biggest compliments I can give to Mike Ferry and their organization with the scripts they provide us for free as well, which is incredible, is all of the questions have to be answered. You can't answer any of them questions as yes or no. You know, if you sold this home, where would you go to next? No, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't answer that way. So it forces people into conversation. So maybe the first couple of questions are a bit sketchy, but then as you go on, you kind of get a basis of, you know, where it's going. Right, it kind of organically turns genuine. Uh, so mm-hmm. let's say that people are not getting the results that they want. You know, uh, some people are using scripts or they're too afraid to pick up the phone or, or whatever it is that they're doing. 
Some people can't even figure out what they're doing wrong. They can't identify the problem correctly. Um, so how would you help a real estate agent diagnose this issue and fix it? Like, let's, uh, let's run through a scenario. Say that somebody, they get past the fear of getting on the phone, but they're just not making any connections that they want to. Where do you think they should start? So I actually had this conversation with one of our newer agents in our office this morning who came in to me. He started with us about two months ago. And he mm-hmm. said to me, hey, I'm prospecting all this time and I'm not getting any results. And then we, we prospected together today in the bullpen. And one of the things I noticed about him was tonality. He sounded a tiny bit like a robot and needs a bit more life into him. But I think the other thing, too, is if you're, you know, just you have to hit more people, you know. You know, if, mm-hmm. I think it's just getting on. Now, for people who have a problem picking up the phone, I worry for them people in this business because, in my opinion, I don't sell homes. I'm in the people business. So all I'm trying to do yeah. is get in the way of a buyer. And, you know, the way I get paid is by getting in between a buyer and a seller and helping with the transaction. That's really what I do. You know, that's our job. We have to speak to people. So I always worry for people who are in this industry who – want to do well and they struggle to pick up the phone or talk to me because, you know, if you get, if you're on a team and you get a lead from your broker or your team manager, you have to call the person, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you prospect and you have to call the person, you know, if you're in a transaction and you have to tell you or there's issues with the appraisal, you have to pick up and phone them. So I think we just have to have the mindset if you want to be in this business that being natural on the phone is is a requirement and it's going to make you a lot of yeah. money. I mean, that's just the reality. So that's my opinion on it, which is very different to everyone. But I think being in the people business, we have to be comfortable on the telephone. And then once you're in front of people, you have to be even more impressive. Can you give me an example of a script you would use for geo leads? I use the just sold. So uh, the just sold script or the just listed. Oh, that's okay. So it's the same one. Get. Yeah, I do, hi. yeah, I use All the right. same one. Hi, this is hi, this is John oh, okay. from Huntington Menendez Real Estate. I recently sold a home in your area over on One Two Three Main Street. It had four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it sold for two hundred thousand dollars. And then you know, when someone sells a home, you need two more sell right away. So I was wondering, mm-hmm. when do you plan on moving? You know, I use the same script. Right. Okay, great. I, I was just curious about that. So let's say that you build a sphere of influence, which is what everyone's always working on, but then you contact that entire sphere of influence and you get zero results from that. Uh, how would you proceed from there? Well, the reality of is your SOI and, and center of influence is going to take time. You have to really maintain and manage that for, for two or three years, and I'm not at that point yet. So it's only this year that I've decided to get more referrals. Because what I do is every time I close a deal, uh, whether it's a buyer or seller, I call them the day it closes. Then I make sure the first month I'm touching them two or three times, you know, hey, do you need anything from me right now? Or is that, you know, make sure if it's a seller, hey, did you get all your proceeds? Or um, if you're a buyer, hey, do you need any contractors to do any work? You know, I'm always touching base with my clients. Then after that, Mm -hmm. I call them four times a year minimum. And then I always call them on their birthdays. I make sure I always get that. So I'm always touching my clients, you know, four, five, six times a year. And I ask for referrals when I speak to them as well. So I'm kind of massaging my, my database. I think it's important to, to do that. And it's, it's not instant success. And that's why expired and withdrawals are great because you can speak to an expired that came off the market. They're angry at the last stage and you set an appointment the next day. You go on the appointment, you take the listing and 45 days of sales. And then you've got a new client and you've been paid. So that's why expired and withdrawn is so good. Yeah. No, oh, that's true. Um, and and also, like, what about using GeoLeads as like, a tool? What, what about geographic farming do you think is the most valuable, especially compared to expired? GeoLeads are great for contacts because you, you speak to more people in less time because you just hit more people because – you know, it's a very, it's more of a calming conversation. I mean, some people still say, don't ever call me again, which is fine. You know, I had probably three or four of them this morning. Don't ever call me again. Okay, no worries. Trash, I trash them. I'm not going to convert mm-hmm. them into a, into a sale. So the geo leads are great because you're really hitting an area, but we're also doing the community a service. We're telling them, hey, hey this home just sold in your area for, mm-hmm. you know, $300,000. And, and they don't know. They, oh, my God, we bought for 180 We can't believe that. You know, and, and you're really doing them a service. So I picked up 
buyers from Justice is Just Sold. Even last week, I was I took a listing. I called all the homeowners in the community. One guy had two properties in that community, and he said he wanted a third. So I ended up meeting him two days later, showed him another condo in the community, and he wrote an offer on the property, and that was just from Geo Leads, you know. And I'm just like, this is amazing. Yeah. And the offer, the offer yeah. was rejected, but I now, I now have a client there, and I remember one about two or three months ago, um, which I spoke to Curtis about. I was prospecting a new listing, just you know, just sold, you know, just listed scripts, and this and this lady said, "Oh my God, I don't need to sell, but my my dad wants to move here from Hawaii." So I never met the person Aww. I spoke to. I I never met the dad, and I got them in contract on a brand new home for six hundred thousand dollars, and I never met either of them from wow. Geo I mean, that is wow. an incredible return on your on your calls. You know, that's a you know fifteen yeah. to eighteen thousand dollar paycheck just from making phone calls. So yeah, I just think that the geo leads are good because it means that we're having real estate based conversations with people out there in the community. So I think that's the best yeah. thing about geo leads. Yeah, it seems to provide like an excellent opportunity, and, and it's unique too. It's a unique opportunity. Yeah, and especially that inventory is down, which means. It's very competitive. Sellers are getting higher prices. So when we're informing these people who are maybe don't know about the market, no one's calling them. Maybe they don't know their home's worth three fifty. Maybe they think it's worth two eighty, and then they're like, "Well, three fifty, we can sell at this price." So I think the geo lead is really good when the market is like it is now, where it's, it's you know it expires and we've drawn to getting oversaturated with agents, and then obviously inventory is low as well. So. I mean, when we're working with buyers, we should be calling these areas to help our buyers get homes that are off market to stop them from multiple bids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. I think that it's incredibly helpful to people who are just trying to figure out their way to success. And it seems like you've got it really figured out. Um, In fact, I actually huh. have one final <laughs> question for you. That's good. So what that? That cause I don't feel like I've got it figured out at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you figured out how to figure it out. Like you're working on it, which is uh, a lot of people have. A lot of people struggle with that. They don't even know where to begin. So it's it's good. It's good that you know yourself, and it's it's good that you know how you personally can work towards success. I think that's a pretty big step um, in becoming a successful real estate agent. Uh, so speaking of success, um, you mentioned analytics. You've mentioned your your tight schedule self-discipline if you had to pick one thing to attribute your success to what would you what 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 one word or phrase or or tool would you would you say you could attribute your success to i just turn up every day even turn since up I've every started day. real estate since i started real estate two years ago every day i'm in vegas and not maybe on vacation in england with my family or my wife's from hawaii when i'm here in vegas on the days I meant to turn up, 99.9% .9 of the time I've turned up, which means, you know, Monday to Friday, every day, first one at the office. Even the days I really didn't want to go, which is very rare because I, I actually I love my job. <laughs> I get excited to wake <laughs> up. My, my wife thinks it's weird. <laughs> but uh, I think I just, I just turn up every day. I always turn up to the office, first one here, uh, dressed in a suit, ready to go on an appointment. Even if I don't have any appointments, I always want to feel like I'm in a position that if someone says, hey, can you come to my house tonight at 5 p.m.? Or, hey, can you show me this house at 3 o'clock? Then I'm in a suit, professionally dressed, ready to go. So I just yeah. think that I, I feel like even though maybe there's other people out there who work harder or they're more, more, you know, more efficient with their time, in my mind, I feel like I outwork everyone. And I'm, you know, mm -hmm. that's really what I put it down to, just turning up every single day, you know, ready to work. Yeah, it's a simple concept, but honestly, I think that's what it comes down to. I think you've really, you know, I think you've really nailed it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, some people really find prospecting really easy, where really for me, prospecting isn't easy, but then I find turning up to the office every day easy, and then they struggle with that. So I think we all yeah. have pros and cons, you know, we're all, and that's why it's really important to really find out, you know, who am I, you know, what, is, what do I want from my business? You know, do I want to, yeah. you know, some people, listen, can you know, I just want to do 25 deals. You know, that's going to be great. It's going to give me time to, you know, go on vacation with my family, and I'm happy with that. I'll make X amount of money, and that's okay. But I think the problem is is when we set our goals for 50 deals and we do, say, 12 or 18, then I, I think there's a huge disconnect when we do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it goes with what you said. You tend people can tend to be overcritical of themselves, and that's just not productive. Yeah, and just get dragged in so many different directions. I mean, you know, there's so many different methods of prospecting. You know, there's so right. many different coaches out there who offer different things. So I think just simplify everything, simplify your schedule, um, really focus on the agents that you look up to, and just think, you know, I like the business they do. I want to do that. Like, how do they do it? And you know, that's really yeah. what I think is important. Just really focusing on who. Who do you look up to and how can you replicate what they're doing? Yeah, and that's why we have you here today talking to us. <laughs> so yeah, thank yeah, you no, so much you. for doing that. Uh, no, John, thank you so much for talking with us today. It has been such a pleasure. I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I know that agents who are listening who are, who are struggling will really appreciate um, all your advice and, and your wisdom. So thank you so much for, for talking with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure, and uh, I learn a lot too, you know, so even when you talk back and, and you hear what you're doing, even now I can think in my head, well, if I did this, this, and this better, then maybe I'd be at 75 deals for the year instead of 60, so just it's a great business where we can just keep growing, so it's, it's awesome. Yeah, well, that's very inspiring. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for us today. On behalf of the Red X community, we would like to thank John Sullivan for taking time out of his busy schedule to share some wisdom and advice with us. And we'd like to thank you, the audience, for asking these questions and participating and being active in your learning experience. And if you have any further questions or if you'd like to learn more about any of the GLEs that John talked about today, how to use them, the cost, what results to expect, how they compare to other products on the market, or any of our other products such as our Storm Dialer, Red X Expired, Fizbos, Furbos, or pre-foreclosures, you can go to theredx.com or call 800-731-7339, and somebody on our team would be happy to help you out. Again, that number is 800-731-7339. It was my pleasure working to find out what's important to you and getting your answers today, and I'm really looking forward to the next time. Happy prospecting. Expecting. Expecting. Expecting.